Okay, Tov, today's staff is that pay tests in Baba Kamas. We learn for a chain called Basis Shalom Shim Basar Shibya. We're up to the ninth line down on that pay test Amaral. That pay test Amaral from Rabbi. Tovasano, we were just discussing an issue of Tovasano. What is Tovasano? Tovasano generally is interpreted as being goodwill, meaning I sell you something. I don't, it's not, I'm not selling you for face value. I'm selling you for some value that's in there. That's in there. For example, uh, classic cases a grandfather selling truma to a coin. Now, you have to give truma to a coin, yes, but the, um, <clears throat> not yeah, selling to a coin, but he's, let's say, uh, a, a um, bad, not, selling isn't the right word. A grandfather has a grandson who's a coin. And um, the coin's not allowed to pay for truma. It's supposed to be given to him. But the grandfather may give, uh, maybe give a few shekels to some guy. So listen, do me a favor. Help out my grandson over here. He's a coin. Give it to him. So that's like, that's calling, that's uh, for a little bit of goodwill. He's not actually giving him the value of the grain that he's giving this truma, giving some value. Here we're talking about a case where um, the, the, uh, uh, a woman, let's say he, she has a ksuba that's worth $200. That's what the husband would pay her if he dies or divorces her. However, she needs, she's desperate for some money. So she says, you know what, I'll sell you today. I mean, we may live together for another 50, 100 years together in marriage, right? However, it's worth $200 when I'm divorced or widowed, but it may be worth nothing if I die before my husband. If she dies first, the husband inherits her, he doesn't pay the ksuba. So she says, I'll tell you what, instead of $200, because you may not be able to collect the $200, right? And why would you give $200 for $200 anyway? You have the $200 already. But let's say I sell you for $25. That's called the goodwill or the value, that, let's call it the, the current value, the present value of a $200. Today, you can think of options and present values so let's say this this uh, tr this uh, ksuba, if it's collected, would collect would be two hundred dollars, right? If the husband divorces her or dies, two hundred dollars. However, it's not worth two hundred dollars now because the husband didn't die in the divorce. So, but let's say it's worth twenty five dollars. Would you like to spend twenty five dollars on and take the option that maybe you'll get two hundred? Maybe tomorrow my husband will die. You get two hundred. That's a pretty good deal, right? On the other hand, you may get nothing. That's what's called an option, right? Today they sell options. You buy an option, you may get nothing, or you may do very well. That's the top of son we're speaking about over here. So the Gemara said yesterday, at the end of yesterday's op, we talked about two things. One is the famous Takanas Usha. Even though a husband is entitled to eat the fruits of his wife's nichsem that means that a husband are not written into the ksuba, but let's say assets that she acquired subsequent to their marriage, which... Uh, he's entitled to use with no responsibility for them. He can have the fruits, etc. He doesn't have to make good on them. They aren't written into the ksuba. He didn't take it upon himself responsibility to uh, to guarantee the value of these assets. He's entitled to use them. However, so but she really owns them. Can she sell them? Technically, she could. But in Usha, when the Sanhedrin was sitting in the town of Usha, they made a takana that she can't. And as if she sells them, and then. Let's say she dies, the husband inherits her, he could take those assets back, even though she really had title to them. But in order to encourage uh, a good marriage and concern a good relationship in the marriage, he said, you know what? If she has assets that you're using, she can't sell them, even though she really owns them. That was the Takana of Usha. So the Gemara asked the Kasha on that, what about the case where Adam liars come along and say, witnesses or liars say, uh, you know what? We know this woman was divorced and she collected the ksuba. She's no longer in town for the ksuba. Then it turns out that they're liars. She's still living with him and they're liars. So what should they do? What should they do? They're Adam Zoman. What are, what's the rule of Adam Zoman? They have to pay or they get the punishment that they were trying to inflict on the on the uh, defendant. So over here, they were trying to make her lose the $200. Should they pay her the $200? So we say over there, no, you don't say the whole ksuba because it's not worth $200 now. Why? It's only worth the Tova. So no, what is it worth right now? Let's say the $25. So uh, so he said over there, uh, and what's the Tova? So now you figure out what, what would, what's the present value right now? So the Gemara tried to prove from over there, ah, must be there is a Takara Susha, because if you don't have the Takara Susha, why do you say that her husband will definitely uh, inher inherit her if she dies? Maybe she could sell it right now. Mar says, yeah, but that's talking about the constitution was for Nefsi Mulug, not Nefsi Sambarzal. Nefsi Sambarzal, in other words, it's really written in the Ksuba, she's not entitled to sell. That's what Mar said. But Abaye now says, this is where we're starting today's up on the, the ninth line. I'm Rabbi Tobas and all. Once we start talking about this idea of goodwill or present value, meaning you're not selling the thing for face value, but what it's worth right now, 
all of us here in the sister, we started talking about it. Name of Milsa. Let's let's say something about that. Tobas Anoa. Who gets the Tobas Anoa? She has a Ksuba, right? She has a Ksuba that's worth two hundred dollars, and she sells it today for twenty five dollars. Again, why? Why would somebody give her twenty five dollars? Because maybe he'll kill like two hundred if her husband dies or divorces her. On the other hand, he may get nothing if she dies first. So he's willing to pay twenty dollars. Who gets to keep twenty five dollars? The husband or the wife? So, uh, so Abayi says, "Tovus on a whole bus." And since we're talking about it, Nimrus will say something about that. What is it? Tovus on all she gets to keep it. Have it belongs to her. These are the Baal. Have it if the husband gets it. Lemur la Adam. In that case, where the Adam Zoman came and tried to take away her ksuba by saying, "We know she was. We testified that she was divorced, and she collected her ksuba already." So why can Isaac on the Baal? If it belongs. Let the Adam say, what do you mean? We didn't cause you any loss. What's the loss? $25? The husband would have gotten it anyway, not you. What, what loss did we cause you? We didn't cause you any loss. The Adam Zoman have to pay for the loss, for the damage that they intended to inflict. Why? They didn't. They could say, listen, uh, the husband would get it anyway. LMI, since we say that they are Adam Zoman, they have to pay the, the $25 to the woman. Must be that she gets to keep it. So it's more of uh, why? Let me say, what do we cause you lost? We have a Muslim say, hey, you sold it for the $25 of Tobas Anoah. He would have taken the money from you. He's entitled. Or Rav Shalman, no. That's not, a, that's not a good proof. Truth is, even if the husband gets it, it's still considered a loss to her because there's more money in the house. They got a bigger budget now, right? A wife likes when her husband has more money because there's more money to go around that she could spend and that's good, you know, that the uh, that the house will have more value, the household will have more value. So that's not a, a good answer. You can't say, oh, I didn't cause you any loss. He did cause me a loss. Even if the $25 would have technically gone to my husband, but I'm happy that my husband gets money too. There's more money. We can have steak for dinner now. Just like Abaya said that it must be that it goes to the wife. It's no proof from the fact that the Adam Zoman have a claim, that, you know, that the Adam Zoman have no claim. It's still, that's the halacha, that she gets to keep the money. Even though normally a husband is entitled to use his wife's assets during the marriage, whether they're written into the ksuba and he's responsible for them, or whether they came subsequent to the ksuba, let's say she got an inheritance from a great uncle or something, and uh, he's entitled to use them, even the bahir, the husband, cannot take that money. My, my time, paritikin rabbanan. Rabbanan assigned the husband Fruits. In other words, if, uh, if, if she has property, he can eat the fruits thereof while they're married. Pay her to pay her, take her The Rabbanan did not give, did not assign to him the payers of the payers. What do you mean the payers, payers? Here we're talking about she has a ksuba, or she says, um, you know, she wants to sell the ksuba for Tova Sana, and now you want to get the fruits of that ksuba that she's going to sell. You know, she's going to sell and get the fruits thereof. Direct fruits from her assets, he had, he's entitled to use during their marriage, but he's not entitled to use. The fruits of the fruits, meaning she's entitled to the ksuba. Now, if she sells the ksuba, that would be the fruits of the fruits. And Rashi points out, what do you mean the ain't about ocho payers? What payers over here? If she sells the ksuba for $25, what payers are there? We don't say that $25 should be invested in real estate and in property and a farm, and he could eat the fruits thereof. We don't say that. Rather, she gets to keep the money, and he's not entitled to use it all. When these rabbis came from the yeshiva, I mean, they said like this, Tanina, we have a brisa or a mishnah really from uh, as a proof to the Usha, to this concept that of Usha, what's the Tekan of Usha again? That a husband, that a husband who's entitled to the nifsim malig of his wife while they're married, is such a strong, he has such a strong mortgage or obligation uh, on that on that property that she can't sell it. That was what he said in the Kanasusha, that a woman who sells the Nuchsim Malog while her husband's alive, and then she dies so that he inherits her, he doesn't lose that Nuchsim Malog. He gets to take away the Nuchsim from the Lekuchos. So he says, you know what? We see a proof from our Mishnah. Let's take a look, a quick look back at the Mishnah in the Pei Tesmanal, two blot ago. The Mishnah yeah, over there said, Pei pardon? What did I say? Pei Zion? I said Pei Tes. Oh, we're on Pei Tes. I meant Pei Zion. Right. Um, look at what The Mishnah said over there, that um, and that we're going to quote it right now. That evet by isha piyasam ra damage done to or from an evet, it's an evet knani or a woman. It's bad. It's a bad business. It's it's bad for you when there's damage. And why? Because if you damage them, you have to pay. They're human beings. But if they damage, they're put from paying. Why? Because an evet mashkan evet kana He doesn't have any money. Uh, he doesn't have any money. And a woman doesn't have any money. 
but they have to pay later on. Let's say they get divorced or he's freed, there's still some, there's an outstanding obligation they would have to pay. So that's what our Mishnah says. So you know what? Either a pup and Ravun Rav Shua says from, our, from that Mishnah, we see a proof to this concept of the Tekonis Usha. Why? Tanina, again, back in Argamar and Paytest in the middle of the page. Tanina, the Tekonis Usha, however, be should be Gosan Ra. That's what the Mishnah said. That an Evikanani or a woman, damage done to or from them is a bad business. Why? Because a Chovman, if you did damage to them, you have to pay. In other words, it's not a fair situation. If you damage them, you have to pay. But if they damage to somebody else, if they had you should damage, put from them because they don't have any money. What do you mean? What do you mean? If there's no Takanasusha, again, what's Takanasusha? That a woman cannot sell her Mechse Malug while, while her husband's alive, right? while she's married to her husband. If you don't hold of that Takanasusha, she says that she could sell her Mechse Malug. Why do you say she doesn't have any money? Let her sell the Mechse Malug. If you don't hold it, meaning she could sell her Mlesimuluk, let her pay for it with her Nesimuluk. Sure, she doesn't have her bank account is right away garnished as soon as she's getting married. As soon as she gets married, her husband owns her assets, her stocks and bonds, all that stuff belongs to the husband. But if she has Nesimuluk that came into the marriage subsequent to getting married, wasn't written into the but wasn't part of the original deal when they got married, <clears throat> that's hers. So why can't she sell? Why do you say, oh, if a woman does damage, she gets off easy because she doesn't have to pay. She doesn't have any money. Well, she can sell the Nechzimuluk. So the Konsusha. Even if you hold up the Konsusha that says she can't sell the Nechzimuluk, she can't sell the Nechzimuluk for her assets. The top of the with She can sell for Tav What does Tav mean? She's actually selling the assets. Just selling. She has a field of trees. That's what Nechzimuluk. She can't sell that. That's what, that's what the Konsusha. But she could sell the goodwill thereof. And if she could sell, or the option, she could say, listen, these next thing, look, I'm not allowed to sell it to the rabbis, I'm not allowed to sell it. But it's worth $100,000. It's a big field worth $100,000. I'll sell it to you for $20,000. And with the option, what? That if my husband dies, you get it. You get the $100,000. If I die first, my husband keeps it. You get nothing. Again, that's the option. Why can't she do that? Even if the conversation was she can't sell the next thing outright, but even if you hold it up so she can't sell, she can sell for Tova Sana, but Titanah. So why do you say over here, well, we have a proof from our Mishnah, since if a woman does damage, she doesn't have to pay, that proves that the Kanasusha. Why? Because why doesn't she sell enough Simulog? Okay, even if you hold enough Simulog, if you hold it to Kanasusha, and she can't sell enough, she can still sell it for the present value, let's say $20,000 instead of $100,000, and pay for her, the damage that she did with that. Ella the less law. It's very simple. When you say the Yosan Ra'an Mishnah says that if a woman does damage, she gets off easily. Right. She doesn't have any of so long. Ella del Esla. And the answer is, why can't, or even if you say she she can she cannot sell the assets, but she could sell it for the, the present value, right? So why don't you, the less law. Maybe she doesn't, how can I have the less law? Just like she can't, the, the, she can't sell it because she doesn't have an input. Here also, she can't sell it because uh, she doesn't have any. That, that's why. So therefore, it's no proof from the, 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 the Gosusha. Maybe we don't hold of the Takana Susha. Maybe indeed she could sell, but she doesn't have anything to sell. So it's more of a Tasmak Subasavatalasana. Okay, she has no Nikse Maluk. She has no assets that came into the marriage after she got married, but she has a Ksuba. Why doesn't she sell a Ksuba for Tavasana? The two hundred dollar Ksuba, let her sell for twenty five dollars, we take one pay and pay the one that she damaged. And so money where Mary goes to Kramer, the Omar also let him she issued off the shots look suba. Mary you're not allowed to stay with your wife. For even a moment without a ksuba. It's a famous machlok is whether ksuba is the rice or drabana. We generally hold that ksuba is drabana. Rabbana, like Romero says, you can't stay without a ksuba for one minute. Why? Because we want a uh, person to think twice before he divorces his wife. So uh, this way he'll think twice because he's going to have to write out a check uh, you know, if he gives her a ksuba. So you can't stay without a ksuba even for, for a moment. So that's what Romero says. That's why he wouldn't even sell a ksuba. Tells him ksuba, but sell a ksuba for tobas hana, right? And this way, she doesn't really have the ksuba anymore because the guy who bought it bought the rights to the ksuba. So, so I think Mars says, what kind of an answer is that? Time am I? Why did Rebeir say you can't stay without a ksuba? So it shouldn't be easy for him to divorce her. He'll think twice about divorcing her. Whether he has to pay her or whether he has to pay the person that she sold the ksuba to, it's the same thing. It's going to cost them, right? Here he is also not going to divorce the Magarishla, also the one who bought it from her, the government who accessibility will collect the ksuba. So the reason for not to for having a ksuba at all times is so that he should think twice before divorcing her. That shouldn't prevent her from selling the ksuba to somebody else, right? 
for some money because it's the husband would still have to pay him. So that's not a problem. So again, why can't she, if she does damage to somebody else, our mission says she doesn't have to pay unless later on she's divorced or widowed and has her own money. But right now she doesn't pay. Why not? Okay, and this thing look, maybe she doesn't have, but she has a ksuba, let it sell the ksuba for Thomas or no. She's allowed to do that. She can't sell the ksuba, right? Because she's not allowed to stay without a ksuba, but, but uh, for Tovah Sanoa, she could sell it for that. Oh, the answer is, is that's the same thing because if she sells the ksuba, right? I mean, what's the problem with selling the Tovah Sanoa? The ksuba is still an outstanding obligation that would uh, be required for the husband to pay if he divorced her, so think twice about the divorce curve. The reason why we say here that when she damages somebody else, she doesn't have to sell her ksuba for tova sana, because tova sana is simply words. It's like a present value. You're not really selling the ksuba per se. You're selling the rights to collect the $200, right? When she sells her $200 ksuba, face value is $200 because she can only collect it upon death or divorce. Her husband dies or divorces her. If she dies first, there's nothing to collect. So it's simply a like a, it's words, it's, it's, it's an obligation, but it's not really, you're not selling the real thing. And that's not, that's not obligated to the Nizik. In other words, if Reuben damages Shimon, he has to pay Nizik salary for Shevis and Boshes, right? That's an obligation. But if he has some option that he might be able to sell and get that, that, that's not, that doesn't go into his, uh, into his um, pool of assets that the Nizik could collect from. This is more alam alam. Mila didn't stop the dinner, and why not? It could be sold. It's still an asset, right? If you have, uh, um, you know, insurance, you prepaid insurance, that's considered an asset. You know, assets aren't only physical things that you can hold in your hand. They're also obligations or ability to collect. So here, you could sell for money, but right, it's sell an option. It's worth money. So alam alam mila misab the dinner. Elam shim the shmuel. You know what the reason is? Why don't we say? Listen to this carefully. We're asking over here, when she does damage to somebody else, why don't we say she should pay? She has no money. She could sell her ksuba for its present value. So she could pay with that. If Reuven, <clears throat> Reuven has obligated money from Levi, Levi owes him money. And he sells that IOU to Shimon to collect it from Levi. And now Reuven is mochel. He forgives the debt. Even Reuven's uh, heir could also be booklet. Seems like an unfair thing. You sell an IOU to somebody else, and then you release the person who owes you the money, the loba, from that division. Because you could do that, though. Because it's a, you're only selling him your rights to collect, and you could be mochel those rights. So over here also, over here also, what's the point in, in um, her selling the rights to the ksuba? somebody else. What again, what are we saying? She damaged somebody else to the tune of $25, but she has no money. But she can get $25 by selling the Toba Sana of Riksuba. So why don't we say sell her to sell? The answer is because she might sell it, she might uh, uh, you know, sell the Ksuba for the $25 value, the Toba Sana, and then she can uh, release the husband from the obligation to pay. She's not mochel the Ksuba. She could do that. So what did the buy guy buy? Nothing. Uh, but, but we don't know. He's going, Amri Zvunin Zavna, so sell it. The teeth and lay and give the damage of the money. In other words, the person who was damaged is entitled to $25. So we say, why don't you sell, you woman, you should sell the silver for $25 to and on and pay the Nizik. Uh, you know why? Because the person who bought it for the $25, he may not be able to collect the silver at all, right? So I'm his moon is up, the teeth lay, be mochle, the guy be bow, temple, let her be mochle. She's mochle, she's mochle. So the guy who bought it will wind up with nothing. He'll wind up with. You say Khatul Basak. Yeah, the Nizik will get us $25. Amri, call the Gabe Baal Bari The answer is this isn't a fair deal. Because we know she's going to do that. She sells the silver for $25. Right. Now don't forget, she's still married to her husband. She happened to be she was involved in a car accident. She damaged somebody else and owes him $25. Now she's going to collect the $25 by selling her, her Ksuba. And she doesn't want to have a bad business with her husband. So she'll be milk for the husband. So why don't you to be machle gabi baal timchla? I'm recalling gabi baal bari machle. I'm sitting on who's vina be a dime love sin. We're not going to cause direct loss like that. No, it's a person that she that she's going to sell the ksuba to for twenty five dollars is going to have a definite loss because she's going to sell it to him. She says, you know what? Here's an option. You buy it for twenty five dollars. Maybe I'll die first. Maybe he'll die first. But she can be machle it anyway, even if even if uh, even if she doesn't die first and he's obligated to pay her, he can he can release it. 
Okay, wait a minute. You say, don't sell it to somebody else for $25. Get the $25. Give it to the Nizik, to the one who's damaged. Give him $25. Because maybe you're going to cause a loss to the person who bought it. Because after he bought that option for $25, you're going to void that option because you're going to be Mokal the Luxuba. So forget that. Forget the third person. Just assign the Luxuba to the person who was damaged. You owe him $25. I'll tell you what. Don't sell it to another guy for $25 cash and give that to the Nizik. Give the Nizik, assign to him the Tova Sana. You, know you know what? I have a civil worth $200 if I die, if my husband dies or divorces me, but the present value is $25. You have that present value. I'm giving you that, that Tova Sana. Oh, uh, uh, good, 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 good. Buckle anyway, you're with me. Good. So give it to him just to still involve a third party selling to him, just to sign it to the one who is damaged. The because now, like you say, if she's going to be mochalit now, he's not going to lose any loss. Now she's also not giving. Like, what are you saying right now? If she's if she damages somebody else, she has no money, so she doesn't have to pay. So we're saying, okay, but sell your ksuba for Tova Sana, you'll have something to pay. Yeah, but then she'll be mochal anyway, and the guy, the guy who bought it from will take us. So forget the third party. Don't sell it to somebody else. Just assign it, assign that value, assign the ksuba, assign the ksuba, which is worth now twenty five dollars. The present value of that ksuba is twenty five dollars, right? Assign that to the uh, one who was damaged. Say here, take my ksuba. If I die first, you won't get anything. If my husband dies first or divorces me, you'll get two hundred dollars. Yeah, but then she's gonna be mochal it anyway. The mochal got be ba'al lokam She won't be. Yeah. But there's no greater loss. Right now, the, what's the news of getting nothing, right? Because she has no money to pay. So you're saying, okay, fine. Let her assign the ksuba to the to this nizik. And if uh, if the husband dies, he'll collect $200. If uh, she dies, she'll get nothing. You'll assign it to him. I, you'll say she'll be mochel. Well, he's no worse off than he is now. Now the nizik has nothing to collect from. That's the point. You're, it's a good question. Do you mochel? Maybe you should mochel about. But look, come upset. The guy's not losing any more. The hashnami look come up. He's not giving anything down. What does the nizik have to lose? Listen, think of it this way. The nizik was damaged to the tune of twenty-five dollars. The woman has no money. She's married. She has no money. The husband's not obligated to pay for her damage. She did the damage, not the husband. So <clears throat> you say, fine. Let her give the ksuba right to the nizik. That's worth twenty-five dollars, and let him. It's worth $25 now, right? Let her give him that. I. What do you say? Yeah, but then she'll be mochlet anyway, and she'll never, he'll never be able to collect it. No worse off now than he has nothing to pay. He can't collect anyway now. So give him the ksuba. If she's mochlet, okay, no worse off than he is now. The answer is so, so, call it gabibal, We know she'll certainly be mochlet. We hold like shmuel. We're not going to cause the bezin to go through this whole process for nothing. In other words, right now we say she has no money to pay, right? She's a woman. Like an Evid Kanani, she has no money. She did damage and she's still married to her husband. She has no money. You can't collect from her. I let him give the ksuba. The ksuba should be mochel anyway. And and what are you going to, so what are you going to, he's no, either Nizik will be no worse off. Yeah, but we know she's going to be mochel. We're not going to be Matriach the Bezdin to go through this process of assigning the ksuba to him and going through this uh, this rigmarole for nothing. Oh, so that's what we say. Fine. So that's what, so we come out, we hold the Tkana Susha. But you can't really prove anything from the case of the uh, of the woman um, not being able to pay because it could very well be that there's no point in her in her uh, selling her to her tovasana and ksuba. Now, again, she can't sell her ksuba technically, but she could sell the tovasana. But it wouldn't help in this case. Ella Adatanya, what about this brisa? Now we're assuming this is talking about love six of us. If she let's say damaged her husband, she hurt her husband. Now we're with more Rashi says over here. We're assuming now. Um, we're assuming now. Let's see because she didn't lose. She, oh, if she let's say damaged. Let's say she damaged her husband. Can her husband say now? Oh, you hurt me. I'm not going to pay the ksuba. She hasn't lost her ksuba. Let's see. Why? Why do you say tivna nela ksuba? So let her sell her ksuba to him. Labala betovas ana b'ha chavala di machal gabi b'al. Like I'm saying, there's no loss now, right? No loss now. What? She damaged her husband. Right? She has nothing to pay. The husband could say, all right, I'm not going to pay the ksuba. But he's, he's, he has to pay the ksuba. Okay, I'll sell it. I'll give you, I damage you to $25. You can keep the ksuba now. You can, I'm selling you the ksuba. If she's mochalim, so he's he's no worse off. He's mochalim the ksuba. He doesn't, but either way, he doesn't pay the ksuba. If he, if he winds up having to pay the ksuba, he's paying himself. 
And if he doesn't pay Ksuba, he's also paying himself. So I said, Why do you say she hasn't lost her Ksuba? She's in top of Ksuba. She damaged her husband. You say she hasn't lost her Ksuba. Why? Why don't you say, let her sell the Ksuba to the husband? Right? But Tobas is worth $25. But Chabala, I will say she'll be more. Fine. So then he also, it's even better. She'll gain, he'll gain, he won't have to pay. He mach like a biba like a pseudo. Either way, he doesn't have to pay the ksuba. Because if he buys the ksuba from her for $25, meaning for the loss that she that she inflicted upon him, he's she, he's entitled to $25. So sell, give let her let her assign the ksuba to him. If if he divorces her or dies, he has to pay the $20 to himself. He hasn't lost anything. If she's mochal, also he hasn't lost anything. So about her mayor, that goes like a mayor. The also she says to Afu Shach's blood ksuba. If that's the case, he doesn't have a ksuba at all. And at that point, if she assigns the ksuba to her husband, that he's going to collect it. He, she has no protection. What's the idea of a ksuba? He'll think twice before divorcing her. No, because he hasn't. Uh, just the opposite. Here at time of my they shall only take off any now. Let's see. The reason for ksuba is so she should. He should think twice before divorcing her. Here she'll certainly. He'll certainly divorce her and collect the ksuba. Uh, he'll, he'll collect the, the damage due, uh, due to him. So here. Uh, you say you, you certainly cannot uh, allow her to assign her ksuba to the husband because the husband certainly is going to take advantage of it. If more if that's the case, even without assigning her, so I say also without that, if she she hurt her husband, she physically and you know physically inflicted pain on her husband. What do you say? Okay, she she hasn't lost her ksuba. She's entitled to keep the ksuba, right? The, why? Because if she assigns the ksuba to him, then there's uh, he hasn't lost that. He has no he has no ksuba on her. But if that's the case, forget about him as her assigning the ksuba to him. Right now, she's divorced. She's inflicted pain on him. He'll divorce her. Why doesn't he divorce her and get the money that way? Once he divorces her, he owes her to another. Now she has cash and he'll collect her, collect her money. He'll collect the, the damages. That's in other words, what do you gain by saying that? If she inflicted pain upon him, she you can't tell her to assign the ksuba to the husband because then there'll be no ksuba, right? There's nothing, there's nothing keeping her in the marriage. There's no, no obligation on the husband to keep her in the marriage. Even if you don't tell her to kiss sell the ksuba, if she inflicted pain upon him, he'll divorce her anyway to collect his money, right? He has a choice right now. This woman just inflicted pain upon me. Should I stay with her? Or should I collect my ksuba? I'll divorce her and collect my collect the money that she owes me. Maybe she damaged him to the tune of $4. And he doesn't want to divorce her. He'll have to give her to her house. He's not going to have a case like that. And Chami, if the monies were reversed, you're right. That could happen. But you can't prevent that. If she, she shouldn't have hurt him in the first place. But over here, you say, what do you gain? Why do you say that she hasn't lost her ksuba? What do you mean? Why shouldn't she lose, she'll lose her ksuba? Even if she doesn't, even if you don't assign the ksuba to him. He'll divorce her anyway to, to get his money. He has, to go, he has doctor's bills. The answer is the doctor's bills are four or five dollars, and he doesn't want to pay her ksuba. Go to the ksuba, so the Mishima who bought it for that little amount of the, of the damage, but well, he's not going to take a bigger loss. The Eden of Fisha ksuba, so, so what? Let's say she has a big ksuba. Ksuba da Raisa. Ksuba da Raisa, again, Ksuba da Raisa, even if you say that we all the ksubas are up on them, but the amount of the $200 is based, at least it's on Asmach, it's based on. The 50 shekels that the Torah talks about that you give to a girl who was raped or seduced, you pay 50 shekels. 50 shekels is $200, 200 zuz, right? A shekel is in the Torah is like a seller, which is four zuz. So if her ksuba is, let's say, $500 instead of the $200, even if she was at the Raisa, look what's with the Raisa. So reduce the ksuba. You know, what is what's Rameir say? You have to have a ksuba. You can't be without a ksuba. So reduce it to $200. Let her sell the rest of it. Parents. Why didn't you say, why do you say she can't sell her ksuba? She can't sell the ksuba for Tobas and uh, she can't sell the ksuba outright because uh, you know we, we, we or give it to the husband for the for it because he has to he has to have some reason to stay you know to, to keep her in the marriage. He has to have an incentive to keep her in the marriage by not paying. But let's say her ksuba is five hundred dollars. All you have to have for that is a basic ksuba, two hundred dollars. The extra money, the three hundred dollars, you could sell and, and with that money she could pay off the damage that she did to him. Go on the loan of the bus with the rice. Maybe you don't have a ksuba like you're right. If you had a ksuba that was worth a lot of money, you're right. And she did damage to her husband. You could say, listen, okay, a ksuba, you need a ksuba of 200 dollars She has she doesn't lose her ksuba. But the extra amount, she could sell that off 
basically give it to her husband for Tavas or sell it to somebody and pay the obligation off that way. Right? Go to law, but we're talking about a case where the exhibit, she just had a basic suba of two hundred dollars. Right? Uh, you go to the law with rice up. The damage was four or five dollars. Mishmar Brazuzi for four dollars will not she's not gonna lose twenty five. When he means twenty five, Rashi explains means twenty five shekels. Twenty five shekels is a hundred zuz, which is the minimal suba of an almana. A woman was married before, her suba is not two hundred, but it's a hundred. He just says for a small, you're not gonna take a bigger loss for a small loss. Hello, at a tanya, if that's the case. What about this? It says a Bryce, it says on a Tosef, like Shem Shalom Timkor, the Tachta, just like she's not allowed to sell her Ksuba while she's married, Tachlo Tafsit the Tachta. She shouldn't lose out when she when she's married to him. Now Rashi explains over here, Rashi says, Kasal Kadai the Rashi about six lines down in the narrow lines. Just like she can't sell her Ksuba when she's married to him, can't be without Ksuba. Kachlo Tafsim Subasa, Plum Bishfil Shum Chabala. The Nezik, Shetasik Barab Dach, we're assuming it means also she doesn't lose her Ksuba at all if she did damage to him. We said before the Tosefta at the top of the page on the fourth line says, Chaini Shikhalavala, she has much Ksuba. It says also, change the top just like she shouldn't sell. She also shouldn't lose her Ksuba. And we assume that means whatever damage she did to him, she doesn't lose out her Ksuba at all. But what do you mean? You just explained that she could lose part of her Ksuba. Sometimes you do, if she doesn't lose her Ksuba, happy dummy, you're going there to fish Ksuba and Kibasa Raisa. Let's say her ksuba is only $200. Uh, uh, right, I mean, let's say the basic ksuba is $200. But her ksuba was for $1,000. She had a big ksuba. Now she did damage to her husband. So you could sell for the other $800, the extra $800. She could sell that off to a or or whatever to her husband or somebody else and pay it off. So why do you say just like she doesn't lose, she's not allowed to sell her ksuba when she's married, to while she's married to him, she shouldn't lose her ksuba, any part of her ksuba, um, what, when she's married to him, also, why? What do you mean? If she did damage him and she had a big suba, uh, she should he should she should be able uh, to to take that extra money that the month that it's over above the two hundred dollars and pay her husband off of that. On Maravas, Maravas says no, that's not the case here. Say for this last case of Shem Shlotim Kavi Tachta Kachlo Tafsi Tachta, we're talking about a different case entirely. Also, the ksuba's been different. We're talking here about the ksuba. What's the ksuba's been different? The ksuba basically says you got to pay two hundred dollars if you if you uh, die or divorce. You got to pay two hundred dollars, and we add on extra amounts, you know, another hundred thousand dollars because we're nice people, etc. And any extras in there, and any assets that she brings into is written into the ksuba. Let's say she has land, and you write that in there. He has to take care of the land, and he owes her all that land. And he has to, if it was land is worth a million dollars, he's got to make sure that he maintains that million dollar obligation. That's all part of the ksuba. But there's another thing in the ksuba too. There's, there's what we call ksuba, the ksuba of the male sons. What do we mean by that? The Rabbana wanted to encourage fathers-in-law, the, the husband's fathers-in-law, to give a big dowry. Okay? But a father-in-law might say, listen, you know, men Torah, and we had it till modern times, men can marry several women. So man says, listen, I can give you my daughter in marriage, and I'll give a million dollar, you know, I'll give you a million dollar assets of stocks and bonds. However, what happens if his daughter dies first. The daughter dies first. The husband collects the money. Okay, so what's wrong with that? That's how it is. Yes, the husband collects the money now. But later on, when the husband dies, who's going to get the money? Not his grandson. Not his grandsons. The other his the other wife's grandsons, right? Because he's going to marry other people. He doesn't want that. So he said, you know what? The ksuba's been different. Is her his grandsons are going to collect before the ksuba. When the, when the husband dies eventually, that's when the wife dies, the husband gets the mar- gets the money. But let's say the husband died and he was married to two or three women. So who gets the money? His kids. Yes. But each one, you have uh, Leah, Rachel, and Sarah, their children get the amount that was written in the ksuba originally before they split up the husband's assets, their their father's assets. That's coming to now. Let's say she sells her ksuba to somebody else. For Toba Sano, she, she could do that. Law of Sidic is different. The didn't different, doesn't get lost. In other words, that's the amount that's written into that's an obligation to the grandsons. The grandsons have that part of the Ksuba, which says basically what? That if if even if their mother died first and the husband inherits them, but when the husband dies eventually, they're going to get their share of the Ksuba that was written in there over and above any share that they're going to share with their other half brothers, other other brothers that they have from their father with a different with a different wife. So that's what me. Shame Shemachas Kishar Lotsi Lotsi Vixubas Nindirchem. My time is Zuzi Ratzor. She had to sell it. She was forced to sell it. She needed some money for her Ksuba, but not the Ksuba Nindirchem. 
If she sells her husband to her husband, let's say she did damage him and she sells it to him, they haven't lost that. My time is Uzi Gran Sua. Now the Gemara says, "Lema takana susha." This takana susha that we started with at the end of yesterday's daf, which said that what that a, a woman cannot sell the nechsei melug, even though she owns them, she can't sell while her husband's alive because we want to encourage good, the good feelings in the marriage. And if she sells them and then she dies, the husband inherits her and he can take it away from the purchasers. Maybe it's a maybe maybe this takana susha is a machlokas tanam whether we held of that takana susha or whether there was a takana susha. The tani charei said like this: Let's say she has not karka, you know, she got she got his hands, but she got some some slaves. A great uncle died after they were after she was married. Great uncle died and left her some slaves. Right now, these have the look. How do how do slaves slaves you keep forever? They don't go out six years like an evidence. These are these are slaves that are avodim goyim or half Jews. They were they were they had a bris mila to become a, a proper evidence. You own them. When do they get their freedom? Only if you knocked out their tooth or their eye. But only, or the other eight farm, but only if the owner did, not the not if somebody else does. It. So let's say uh, if the if the woman who owns them, they're nechse mulug, right? She owns them. If she knocks out the eye, the tooth of the eye, shein eye, then they go out free. Avlolish, but the husband does no. The husband knocks out. The husband doesn't own them. She owns them. He's not the owner. Tainich another bride said lolish she No, either the husband or the wife knocks out the tooth. He doesn't go out free. Sabrua, now we assume that we had a Kulyama kidney page like being group. Yesterday we said, Big Mora said, we passed in like Mishlokesh, Machlokesh, Mishlokesh, and Rabbi Yochum, Big Mora brought down. There's three cases Rashi pointed out that three cases, in general, and Machlokesh, Rabbi Yochum, Mishlokesh, we passed like Rabbi Yochum. In this case, this three cases we passed like Mishlokesh, this is one of them, that King Yerapeiris, the rights that the husband has to eat the fruits of her property is not like a King Yerapeiris. That's what Mishlokesh says. So we're assuming over here, everybody holds that way. In other words, the husband's rights to that nesimulug, he doesn't have my law. The one who says that if the woman knocks out the tooth of the eye, that the that there the evid goes out free. He doesn't have the kanasusha. That means that she could sell. She has rights to sell the 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 evid kanani. This nesimulug. Uh, She's the owner. So she knocks out the tooth of the eye, goes out free. The one who holds no that she even she cannot. Cause the freedom of the slave by knocking out the two the eye. It's like the country says, no, that's a Tanasusha. That she cannot, she has not the rights to sell it. So she's not really the owner. She, the husband for sure is not the owner. Kenya Pes Lakin Yukami, but Rabbanan said she's not really the owner either, because she has no rights to sell it. The proof of ownership is always, can you sell it? Can you give it away? Can you cut a Shanisha with it? Something like that, right? If it's, if it's a man. So that's she doesn't really own it. So that maybe that's my focus here. It says, look. Everybody holds up the Kanasusha. That the Rabbanan enacted a rule and said that even though she owns the Nefse Mulug, she cannot sell it while she's married. Very simple. One was before the Takana. Before the Takana, she was allowed, she she was the owner. And therefore, if she knocked out the tooth of the eye, they ever go out free. After the Takana, she's not really considered the owner anymore. And therefore, they ever would not go out free. That was after the Takana. So the, the price that said, that if the husband or the wife knocked out the tooth of this Evid Kanani, doesn't go out free, is after the Kanasusha. Everybody, both cases are, both prices are speaking about after the Kanasusha. Both are after the Kanasusha, and they hold the Kanasusha. The one who says that the wife, if she knocks out the tooth of the eye of the Evid, does go out free, even though it's after the Kanasusha, my timer, can rub like rub the Amar Rav, take the Shechomets for Shechem, Rafkim, Bidei Shibud. Even though there's an obligation, if you're mocked or something, or it became summits on, on the era of Pesach, or you free an Evet, takes away the sheep. What does that mean? person says to somebody, you know what, I'm going to pay you with this cow. This cow or this sheep, I'm going to pay you with that. I owe you money, I'm, I'm going to pay you. Then you're mocked the cow or the sheep. You know what? Even though there was an obligation, but Hegdish removes that. That's like, it's like, it's like a, a Lachamosh Messinai, that if it's Hegdish, takes the same thing. If let's say um, a uh, goy, uh, a, a goy sells some, uh, gives some money to a Jew before Pesach, and the Jew says, "Okay, I'll pay you with the chametz that I have. I have some chametz in my house. That's on Yud Gimel Nisan. Then Yud Al Nisan comes along halfway, you know, uh, at the six-hour mark, becomes valueless. 
the chametz takes away the shibit, he can't collect from that. If the guy had it in his possession, then it's different. But if the, it was in the Jew's possession, that takes away the shibit. He doesn't know that that uh, that's not obligated anymore. The, there's no ownership in it. Or shikhr, let's say I'm going to pay you. I have an IOU. I owe you money. I'm going to pay you with this evet. Then I free the evet. Not mine anymore. It takes away the shibit. Not the shibit is here too. He says the one who says that the, both we're talking about the worst takana susha. The worst takana susha. She can't sell nechsim milud. But over here, uh, when it comes to freeing a slave, Sheba takes away that uh, that rule. So Lehman the Rabbit if that's the case, that's the Machlok Islam. Everybody holds that of the Kanasusha. Everybody holds us after the Kanasusha. So maybe that the, the rule of Rabba is actually Machlok In other words, the one who says that she can't sell, she can't uh, free the slave, and he can't free the slave, right? Uh, why uh, he can't free why? Doesn't hold of Rabba, because according to Rabba, if she frees the slave, even though, even though um, there's a Sheba to the husband that the, that the slave really belongs to the husband too. That's the kind of susha. So the one who says that she can knock it out holds a brother, the other one doesn't hold a brother. So the brother tonight. He's low. The Kuliyam is everybody holds a brother. That Hegdish comes here takes away Sheba. Bacham, Mulher, Bacham, Shibut, Deval. Here the question is what's the stronger thing? The rabbi said, yes, normally the husband, that the wife frees the slave of knocking out his tooth, that takes away the Sheba. But over here the Rabbanan gave, again, that was the kind of susha that they gave the. The obligation that the husband, uh, the obligation to the husband that he's entitled to use the fruits of Nesim Malug is so strong that she can't sell it. This overrides it. The Rabbana, in other words, effectively, Hegdash Chamsukha normally takes away the Sheba. But over here, the rabbis gave the Sheba of the husband the obligation that the husband had, that, that, that the wife had to let the husband use the fruits, so, and she can't sell it, is so strong that it overpowers that rule of, of Shikhar taking away the Sheba. Be by some Koyama, let's look at Lana Tanai, Gonazusha. This is sort of redundant. It says, Kulama less lahu tikanasusha, or lahani tanoi. It seems to be extra, those words, less lahu and lahani tanoi, it's the same thing. Everybody does not hold of tikanasusha, meaning that a woman could sell enough some wood. But we hear, opinion, Paris, can you goof down the The machlok is this is Kenyan Paris, the husband's rights in the Nesim Malug is like a, uh, like, like a Kenyan Aguf, which means she can't sell, she can't free the slave. That's if you hold Kenyatta Paris is Kenyatta Guf. And the other one holds, no, the one who says that neither one can sell because Kenyatta Paris is Lapka Kenyatta Guf Dami, meaning uh, that uh, the Kenyatta the Kenyan Paris that, um, uh, that, that the husband has is not Kenyatta Guf. And therefore, even though we don't know if it's Kanasusha, so if you hold Kenyatta Paris Guf Dami, the husband's rights in it would prevent her from selling it. If you hold Kenyatta Paris Lapka Kenyatta Guf Dami, it's not like he really owns it. She could sell it. And therefore, she could also free the slave that way. And then the Gemara says this machlokas about Kenyan Pesach Kenyan Yudafim, which we saw yesterday as machlokas of Rechon Shlokesh, is actually a machlokas to Noam, as we'll see tomorrow on this. You know, the Gemara is going to give a whole price over here, which says that there could be several opinions about uh, Kenyan Pesach Kenyan Kenyan Yudafim or not in a more complicated case of selling an Evan for a period of time, uh, or selling an Evan and leaving you the, you the rights to use them for a period of time. We'll see this case tomorrow on Dapsari. Have a good day, everybody. Call to. Yeah, right, right. The whole issue of Sufiwa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the flow is close. <laughs> well, the uh, says you have to have a ksuba in order for the husband to, uh, right. To However, at the end, she could still be mochel. It's still a financial uh, obligation. She could be mochel. It. She could be. No, no, no. He's not saying that. No, no, no. No, it only works one way. It works to... The reason for the ksuba is to obligate the husband that he should think twice before divorcing yeah. her. However, she can still be mofa. That's, no that, that's right. That's right. But there is a ksuba. There is a ksuba. But when it comes to paying it, she can be mofa. Right. Right. She can be mofa. So you're saying that, that counteracts Ramea's. Right. Right. Okay. But Ramea's looking at it from the husband's point of view. Right. The Gemara's Ramea's looking at it from right. Ramea's looking at it from the husband's point of view. That's, you know. Yeah, yeah, but that's up to her, not up to him.